Not in my flat, Finn. No, come on, hurry up. Okay, I'm coming. Apparently, there's something I need to see. Okay, I ran and I just deadlifted over 200 kilograms yesterday, so my whole body's broken. What is it? Well, it's lovely. It is beautiful. Wait, you taste it. Is that my rhubarb compote in porridge? Yeah, but the porridge is even amazing. It's lovely. But do you know how painful that was to run? Good. Go God. sick of you, fat. <laughs> It then, now that I've recovered. <laughs> it's coconut and white chocolate, oats. What do you mean you put actual white chocolate in it? Yeah, I put like eight grams of like white chocolate chips in it and about six grams of desiccated coconut, milk and oats. And we'll then, put the macros on the screen here for you now. And then we've got the uh, rhubarb and blackberry compote. Because rhubarb is in season right now and it has really good macros. Rhubarb is amazing. It is per 100 grams carbohydrate, 0 0.8. 0 0.8. Are you ashamed? Well, we are not best pleased with you. Been thinking about you lately. Got you stuck in my head like a pop song. What I gotta do, baby? Three, two, one. There you are, looking a little less like a hobo and a little bit more like a Viking. Ah. Thanks to uh, my boy. Harris, so we're gonna get Harris into the gym because somebody's been slacking. Mm. You've been doing 300 press ups a day, but it doesn't count <laughs> if you ain't deadlifting and squatting. So you see, my deadlift's been coming on really well. We're gonna get back. Buff Barber oh, yeah. training session. He's just been to a wedding. Do the genie shoes. Grant your wishes. You want to have good hair? Oh, yes, come to Styles. You can have good hair. Wish granted. <laughs> Okay, so title of the video, I've got a problem. Problems and addictions. Let's start with kind of the blend of the two. Problem one. Well, not one, but one, two, three. Woo -hoo -hoo. First pair that I got, and they're called mid virals. Take on some of those old school classics that look nice with the jeans. New DSR jeans going live next week. More updates on that later. NMDs are two W's. What's the W for? I tell you. <laughs> pink to make the girls wink. These are girls pink trainers, but I love the pink and I love the black. You know I like pink. I wear pink trainers. I own pink trainers already. They're the men's ones. They didn't do these in the men's. So what I did was I got the largest size that I could, which is a UK eight or a nine and a half. And because they're a knit, I can sometimes squeeze into these. So these are either gonna be an awesome hit or a mega miss. Now these are some special ones because I picked these for the Gymshark pop-up store, which is coming up in May. Lainey, when's the pop-up? Weekend of the 11th of May. Thank you. Now when we go to expos and things like that, we always used to get a pair of trainers for the expos. Just something cool. Cause you know, it's a kind of a little treat that we used to do to ourselves. Three, two, one. Oh, look, I mean, come on. I mean, they are pretty freaking awesome and they're gonna stand out. So if I'm wearing anything that's kind of a little bit dark, you put these bad boys on the bottom and wham, whammy, whammy, whammy. Every photo is gonna look good. So these are the new Derupt runners. Why is this a problem? I'll show you. Just coming through, coming through. Oh, balls. Nearly there. Two sex. I'm addicted to you. I'm addicted to you. In there. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. You think if this is a problem, you might like to have. And also, what a fucking waste of money. Ah, but just let me hold you back a little bit on that one. Pretty much every single pair of trainers that you see here, bought in a sale, bought at a discount, bought from like an outlet place. I have a problem, I like trainers. I also have the problem that I hate spending 
unnecessary money on things. So here's what I do. One, I limit myself to 80 pounds top that I'll pay for a pair of trainers. And I won't pay that on a regular basis. 60 pounds is kind of my average that I like to hit for. So anything that I see, if I like it, I'll hunt it down like I did with these bad boys and I'll sit on them and I'll wait until they go into the sale or I'll wait until there's a discount thing that runs through newsletters. I also make sure that I sign up to every single kind of coupon-y, jimny jabbery thing. I'm a coupon king. Over the years, this collection has grown. Yes, I've even given some away because if I don't wear them, I give them to friends, I give them to family, I give them to guests who come and stay. Maybe I'll do some giveaways. Would, would, you, would you like a pair of trainers? They're between a size eight and a nine as a rule. Some are worn, worn like once for an expo, like. Like look at these. I bought these at the time, Nike Air Max ones or 90s, whichever these ones are. They're either you love them or you hate them. But I bought those for an expo and everyone loved it. They went, but then I literally wore them for that one expo, haven't worn them since. Plus that style now doesn't go with the clothing that I wear. So that's a problem, changing fashions means changing trainers. So would you like to see a giveaway on that? Let me know, comment below. Also check out the ones I've currently got on. These are awesome. I haven't seen these anywhere else either, look. Pink internals. So there you have it, problem one is kind of my addiction one. And yeah, there's a ton of trainers here and things like that and I do not need all of these. If you're like me and you find something that kind of fits right because we're a bit of a weird shape, ankles of a 12 year old girl. So when I find something that goes well, I tend to buy them in every color and I do the same with clothes and whatnot. But the thing is, is to kind of curb that addiction, at least try and be sensible with it. Like I said, set yourself price caps, coupons and sales and things like that. If you're in the UK, I don't know if it works in the US, but try a site called Top Cashback. Um, literally, you just get money back shopping online. It's, it's awesome. That's how I kind of get around a bit of this problem and maybe I'll do some giveaways. Let me know. Again, comment in the section below. Also, make sure if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Some of you are saying that you're only getting occasional notifications. If you go into the settings of your channel, go to notifications once you're in the settings of your um, login for YouTube, and you can actually scroll through every individual channel. You can set up all notifications. You can get email and push notifications if you go into the settings and don't just hit the bell here. The, the bell here can just give you occasionals. I don't know why that is. It's just another dumb shit thing. Like if I subscribe to a channel and hit notifications, I want to be notified of what that channel is doing. I don't want occasional notifications. You don't get a phone so that people can occasionally get through to you. Do you? No, it's a notification center. I want it to work all the time. Same with this. So there you go. That's how you can get around that. But thank you all for the crazy support and let me know uh, that you're enjoying the new stuff and I hope it helps. Problem number two, and this is a bit of a more serious one. The other day I was doing a shoulder video. I've been filming for about five hours. I obviously been training back hard. I'm doing new things. So the body's going through a new rigmarole. It's getting beat up in a whole new way. And I was literally holding an eight kilogram dumbbell just out like this to show you how to do a lat raise. And I was holding it there and I was just talking and it just went click and a little pop. A little click and a pop, and ooh. So I went to see our sports masseuse and she got in there and worked out it's the tendon that's running from here through to here. And that's actually what emphasized all that bruising on my shoulder, which is still kind of there. So at the moment what's happening is, whenever I'm lifting my arm up this way, I'm getting a pain that just goes whap, right down there. Like, oh shit. This is an acute pain. This is something that's happened. It's gone click, it's popped, and something's damaged. And we figured it's this tendon here because if I have my hands this way, and I lift my arm like this, zero pain, like nothing, can go up, fine. Roll my hand over this way, okay. Now immediately when I come down here and I lift up here, I can feel pain here. If I try to come up to the top now, now it really starts to bite here. Now watch this. If I simply, even in this position here where it's kind of comfortable here and here, if I roll this way, ah, yeah, right through, bam, pain hits straight away, instant. Reason of that is because, so I'm getting, oh, <laughs> oh. Shit, mother, oh, oh. <laughs> So the reason is, there's a tendon that runs right through under here and it comes underneath the muscle and attaches down here. What's happening when that arm is rolling forward there is that that tendon's getting trapped. So the muscle's closing in all around it and because it's inflamed and sore, it's getting, it's almost getting pinched or impinged itself and that's what's firing off and that's what's causing that pain. It's a problem because I now can't hold a bar here to squat like this because this now fucking hurts. I can't do anything lateral at the moment because that hurts because the moment I'm closing off. Pressing up wasn't a problem but I haven't tried it this week since it got worse because I literally woke up the other day and it went from being like a, a bit of a pain to holy fuck I can't lift my arm. So I must have just slept funnily on it. Annoying, yes, but shit like this is gonna happen if we train on a regular basis, beat up our bodies on a regular basis, go through all these testing points of boundary breaking, 
something's going to give at some way, you know, especially if there's been previous issues. It felt good, so I just went ham, you know. Um, and you have to be careful. If you've had something wrong with you and it starts to get better, don't assume that you're completely fixed and just go back and start smashing things. You've got to constantly be aware of what was damaged and the fact that you need to take care of this shit. You need to look after your body. So that means doing the mobility things we talked about, doing the stretching, making sure that you're stretching in between sets if you've got something that was fucked up and now feels better or is still fucked up and you're trying to rehab it. And that's what I'm gonna show you in the gym today. Luckily, I'm still able to deadlift. I can't bench press at all. So I'm gonna show you today stuff that you need to do to help you get through problem times. I'm gonna concentrate, obviously, this is focused on my shoulder, but obviously you can implement this into any area of your body. What I'm not doing is not fucking stopping. I'm still got my goals, still got my end point. This, I know what it is at least, so we're gonna heal it. Life happens, shit happens. I'm gonna take you through how we go through the issue rather than go around it by sitting out, oh, you're hurt, you need rest. Bullshit. This is 3% of my fucking body. There's still 97% of shit that's working here that I can be getting on with. So don't use this as an excuse to quit. Shit is gonna happen. This happens in life. This happens all around us all the time. It's how you deal with issues and how you get through them that will make you the person that makes it to the other side. That's what will make you that better person. That's what will get you through to that goal regardless of the challenges that come your way. If we quit at the first milestone, the first issue, the first hurdle, we'd never get anything done. We'd never be successful people, which is what you see all around you every day. So fuck being average. Just like I said, fuck the algorithm. We're gonna power through. We are gonna power through. So let's hit the gym and hopefully you can implement that into your own training and maybe this mentality you can implement somewhere in life. <sighs> oh, that really bloody hurt. So picked up the girl. She's back looking all nice and clean and shiny. Dad mobile is gone. New tires are on. Oh, 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 they mess with my seats. Don't you ever mess with a white man's seats. I mean, there's a couple of things that you need to do before you even start working out and that is the stretching and mobility. Check out the other videos for some more in-depth mobility for specific things like squats and that. But for this I'm going to show you a couple of good ones on the shoulders if you have an aggravation of overhead work. So obviously what you don't want to be doing is all this kind of stuff above the shoulder height because that's just going to aggravate your injury. So get out of the habit of thinking just because it's a rehab or a warm-up that it's not going to aggravate it. It will. And we want to reduce that inflammation over time by not pissing it off. Here's a nice one I found that works and it's going back to that hand position change. Having your hands like this behind your back, you're going to keep your chest high, you're going to keep your core engaged. What we don't want to see is the upper body rocking and moving. We want to make that shoulder joint move and nothing else. So behind your back you're going to be like this, keep my chest up, core engaged, not rocking. I'm gonna come out as I get to here. Now I'm gonna roll the hands over and then up. And then as I get to here, roll them back. You wanna make that shoulder joint work and move through its natural range of motion. If you're having to do this, that's usually a sign that your shoulder's got some impingement or lack of mobility work. And you can help that with this next movement. Now this is one that you can also carry on and do at home as well as in the gym. And it's very, very simple, but this is really gonna help open up that shoulder and let you work on the mobility. Again, we want to watch any kind of upper body movement. So getting any kind of flat surface, it can be a wall, it can be a bar, a pole, whatever. You're gonna put your hand alongside, get your body in line. And all you're gonna do from here, a couple of inches back, hold. It's as simple as this. You're gonna do that around 15 to 20 times each side. And as you do it, you'll feel slowly but surely that shoulder joint opening up. So keep this rib cage down and just move the shoulder joint back. We're trying to rotate here. It will only move back a few inches. That's absolutely fine. Another one that you can carry out at home, especially if you have a pull-up bar or anything where you can hang off, this is one of the best exercises you can do, whether you're injured or not injured. You should be doing this all the time. And it's a simple monkey hang. You're gonna grip nice and relaxed. You're gonna let the arms extend fully and then you're gonna allow the shoulder joints to completely release. You're gonna let all your body weight sink through all the way to your feet and then relax. After five seconds, take a deep breath and breathe out and let yourself sink even further. What this is gonna do is it's gonna help open up all the shoulder joint. And if you have anything that's getting tight or getting kind of impinged, it's gonna help stretch it all out. This is a very natural way of doing it. And this has often been proven to be the difference between needing surgery and not needing surgery. And now I wanna show you, there's a way of training shoulders, even if your shoulder's bollocks, and you can't do any pressing. It doesn't mean that there's not something you can be doing. Remember, we talked about those hand positionings. We can utilize that in the exercises to actually be able to train shoulders, even though, technically, it's still a bit bollocks. 
bollocks, that technical term. So what we want to obviously avoid is aggravating the injury. So we don't want to be overloading the shoulder by making it do a lot of weight because if you add a lot of weight to a stressed area, guaranteed you're going to destabilize it. And again, it's just going to cause more problems. But what we can do is use a very light weight. This is four kilograms, nothing, baby weight, warm up weight. But we can still get a workout with this by utilizing hand position, control, and speed. This is fine, this side, but here, that hurts even with a four kilo. But what I can do, gripping the dumbbell here at the top, like I told you with hammers, instead of here, gripping it at the top. So that means that when we lift the weight up, now it's gonna stay below that elbow joint. And that's what we want. We don't want the weight coming over the top, creating that tension. Rather than being lateral like this, we're gonna go like this and turn it over and come a little bit more with a straight arm. So in essence, we end up with a movement that looks like this, but causes no pain. Yes, this is light, but if I slow the negative to a three count, come up nice and slow, a little pause at the top and come back down, I'm now creating tension on that muscle. I'm still getting a workout in, I'm not aggravating it, and I'm going through a plane of motion that doesn't affect that damaged area. We're also stimulating the muscles of the shoulder whilst protecting that injured tendon because yes, the tendon's bollocks, but those muscles are still functional. Think about your hand position. Think about changing things about. We're just trying to work our ways around, but if it hurts, don't do it. Other ways of creating that overload are supersets. This is where they come into play. Supersets help you save time, but they can also help add that little bit of tension on or overload to stimulate the muscle. Gripping the dumbbells in the same way, we can add in another movement. We know this grip doesn't hurt us, so we can also utilize it by coming up to the front. So we can do two separate exercises, out to the side and out to the front, or we can utilize them together, out to the side, out to the front. And this way we're working through ranges of motion but not aggravating that injury. And what we're also doing is increasing the work that we're putting onto the shoulder muscles, affecting that medial head and the front part of the delt without, again, aggravating that tendon. So there's always a way. Be playful, try different things. Maybe use this time of being hurt to try different exercises that you'd forgotten about. There's always a silver lining to every cloud. And don't forget, if there's one version of an exercise that hurts you, there's always gonna be a variation that you can utilize. So for rear delts, if the overhead stuff's hurting you, Here's a variation. And if you are getting pain whilst you're working out, don't forget that between every single set, you can literally come back, hang, release, sink down, and open up that shoulder joint as many times as you need. Trust me, this may seem simple and silly, but it is one of the most effective things that you can be doing. Woo. So moving on to some chest alternatives, and like I said, maybe change things up a little bit. Ever wondered why we always go and start on compounds first? Maybe start on something that's a little bit more isolatory, and it's also gonna help you control that shoulder joint. So talking here about cable crossovers, but instead of doing a double arm, do them single arm. What that's gonna do is help you control that shoulder and get used to holding each shoulder down individually, rather than having a leading side. So this can also be an imbalanced corrector. So something maybe you can throw in just generally. Let's utilize this time to try new things. Rather than coming over the top and pulling through, which can aggravate it, Pull in, turn the wrist over. If necessary, utilize your other hand, bring that weight down and completely isolate the shoulder and stop it from hurting whatsoever. We're gonna keep our chest up, shoulders back, disengage the traps. From here, we wanna keep the shoulder down, moving up, keep that shoulder in place and then pull through. So we're focusing on a single peck at a time. With the other hand, you can either stick this behind your back or on your hip. Keeping the tension here and off the shoulder. If you start it feeling coming onto the shoulder, why are you moving the shoulder up? Start utilizing this time to become more proficient in your joint control. Add an incline to our bench. The more of an incline we have, the less shoulders are gonna get involved in the movement. From there, we can also adjust our grip. So, once again, using a lighter load, we're talking maybe about 40 or 50% of your normal, let's try a different kind of grip. So rather than going wide, what we're gonna do is angle in slightly. If that still hurts, we're gonna go full hammer grip. Have you ever given this a go? You never know, you might just like it. And like I said, if this still hurts, rotate fully in, and press using the hammer grip. If you're at a point where your bench press is almost back on, but when you start to add that load on, again, it begins to destabilize the shoulder and you're getting that pain back, but you really want to be benching with the bar, there is one little trick that I can give you that might just help. And it's this, start utilizing the decline bench. Again, it removes a lot of the shoulder from the portion of the movement, plus it reduces any chance of overstretching. Due to the fact we're on a decline, the actual range of motion is reduced. We're gonna be able to go a little bit heavier without overloading that shoulder joint because it's not coming as low as it would with the flat bench. It means that those shoulders aren't getting stretched and there's less chance of destabilization. But again, what we want to be careful here is you don't wanna be going out on max lows. You wanna reduce the load that you're using. Maybe use pause reps, use a slow negative, then explode up with a positive. 
it. But if that explosive movement is also causing pain, then take it out. Go smooth up and smooth down. You're gonna have to play around. You are hurt. You're gonna have to accept that fact and just try and utilize whatever the body agrees with and don't try and push through the pain. It's not the ego that makes gains, it's the brains. Okay, so there you go. I hope that's a number of points that you can utilize and take and maybe go and try. Just remember, you're thinking about controlling the joint and keeping it in a stable position. Think about changing those hand positions and maybe use this time, rather than worrying about being injured, to try new things. Work on different areas that you've maybe let go of in the past and should have been working on more anyway. So that's it. I'm going to go crack on with the rest of my workout. Thanks all for tuning in. Hope you've enjoyed this video. There's usually videos Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. Podcasts on a Monday with the accompanying Monday video as well. Hope you guys are liking that and let me know what other podcasts you'd like to see, what other topics, hit me up in the comment section below. I'm off to make some gains, even though I'm in some pain. No excuses. Boom, baby.